Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at how to install Transmission, which is a torrent downloader, into a jail in TrueNAS. A quick note before we begin, torrenting and piracy tend to be closely associated with each other, but we have to draw a very thick line between the two. Just because a lot of people who are pirating copyright material are doing it via torrenting does not mean that everything that you do via torrenting is piracy. However, I am hashtag not a lawyer and this is hashtag not legal advice and I am not familiar with the local laws and regulations of everywhere in the planet and probably not your local area. So if you've got any doubts whatsoever about torrenting, you should consult your own local laws and legislation. Finally, in general, we don't condone piracy on this channel. So any of the material that you do download using any of these techniques, make sure that they are copyright free and you have the rights to that material. With all of those warnings out of the way, there's a few things that I can do before I install Transmission that makes the whole process a lot easier. So as I'm on my TrueNAS dashboard, I'm going to go to the Accounts section and then open up my Groups. So once we install Transmission in a jail, Transmission is going to create a user account with an ID of 921. And that user account is going to be what Transmission uses to make changes within the jail and associate files and folders with it. But if we think about it, that transmission user kind of needs to be able to break out of the jail to a certain extent. Transmission is going to download a file and that file is going to be contained within the jail, a downloads folder in the jail itself. And it's not very easy for us to use files and folders that it downloads if they're entirely contained within the jail. You'd have to do it completely within the command line. It's much more useful for us to associate the folder that transmission downloads the file to within the jail with a folder outside of the jail somewhere else in our TrueNAS system, probably in one of our data sets. So to achieve that later on in the video, we're going to use a thing called a mount point, which essentially does a symbolic link between a folder within the jail itself and a folder in one of our data sets. That's a step that we'll have to do after we start transmission itself. But if we do that symbolic link, there's going to be a problem. There's going to be a user with user ID 921 that's attempting to modify a folder somewhere else in our TrueNAS system in one of our other data sets that it doesn't have permissions to. So you'll start getting permissions errors. This is the most common problem that I see when people are trying to install transmission itself. So how do we get around that? Well, I've created a group with the user ID 921, or you could create a user with the user ID 921, and then we're going to give it the right permissions to modify the file in our data set that we're going to associate with the folder in the jail. You can see I've already done it here because I've got a group called torrent group. I don't have the user set up. I chose to do a group. You can do it either way. This means later on when the user with the ID of 921 within the jail tries to modify a file outside of the jail, TrueNAS will understand that it's actually this group with the ID of 921 that is trying to modify the file or folder. So provided I give it the right permissions, that shouldn't be an issue. And if you're not certain how to create a user or a group with that ID of 921, you can check out my video on creating user accounts or groups over here. The next thing that we want to do is ensure that we've got a jail to install transmission in. So I've already created my jail. It's called transmissions test here. And that's the one that I'll be using for the purpose of this video. And if you're not certain how to set up jails in TrueNAS, I'm going to go ahead here and expand the jail settings with the arrow on the right hand side. And I'm just going to hit the shell button, which will bring me into the jail itself. Now this is a completely fresh and brand new jail, so I'm going to need to install some tools into it. The very first one is the package tool. So when I go ahead and type package, it's going to warn me that the package management tool is not yet installed and ask me if I'd like to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Y for yes. After the package management tool is installed, I'm going to want to go ahead and install Nano, which is a text editor that I prefer, but you can go ahead and install Vim or any of your other preferred text editors. So I'm going to do that with package install Nano. So remember guys, the commands that I'm using will be in the video description down below, but now that I've installed both package manager and Nano, I can go ahead and install transmission itself. So I can do that by package install and then transmission. And it's just going to take a few minutes to download and install. 
After that's run successfully, we need to modify the system source file to allow transmission. So we can do that with the SYSRC and then transmission underscore enable equals yes command. Once again, this command will be in the video description down below. You can see that that's changed the value from no to yes and transmission should be allowed to start now. Before we move on though, there is one final thing that I like to do and it's change the ownership of the transmission folder that's been created in the jail to the transmission user recursively. So that's what this change own hyphen r transmission and file path does. You shouldn't have to do this, but between multiple versions of transmission, I found that often it's just much, much easier to do that. So I'm going to hit enter there and ownership of that folder structure should transfer over to the transmission user. So now we're going to briefly start transmission to get it to create some of the config and settings files that we're going to edit in a moment. So we can do that by hitting service transmission start. That will take a second to start up, but once that's done, we can go ahead and run service transmission stop to stop the service again. Once that's done, we're going to use nano to modify a settings.json file that can be found in the transmission directory. There are a number of settings here that you might find useful, but are outside of the scope of this video. So the one that we're going to concentrate on is near the bottom. It's called RPC whitelist. So we've got two values here, RPC whitelist, which has a selection of IP addresses and RPC whitelist enabled equals true. Whilst this value remains true, only certain devices coming from specific IP addresses will have access to transmission on your network. I'm quite happy to leave the whitelist enabled, but what I'd like to do is specify that devices on specific VLANs have access to transmission. So under the RPC hyphen whitelist section, we've already got 1.27.0.0.1, which is the IPv4 version of local. And then we've got colon colon one, which is the IPv6 version of local, i.e. the jail itself will be able to access transmission. But what I'm going to do is specify 192.168.0. star. This will allow any device on my network with an IP address of 192.168.0. something to access transmission. Because there are a number of other jails on my TrueNAS system with these IP addresses that I would like to access transmission, that works for me. But you may either disable the whitelisting entirely, or you might put in specific IP addresses here. Once we're done there, we can hit Control S and then Control X to exit out of the JSON file itself. One critically important note here is you must change this setting when transmission is stopped. If you try to change it whilst it's running, the change won't stick. And the next time that you start a transmission, it'll go back to its default values. So just make sure that transmission is stopped before you change these values. Now that we've modified all of the settings we need to within the jail itself, we're actually going to exit out of the shell and go back to the jails list. Then we're going to go ahead and stop the jail that we're installing transmission in. It'll take a few seconds there to stop. The reason we're stopping the jail at this point is we're about to create that mount point, which is that symbolic link between a folder in the jail and a folder in a data set that's outside of the jail. And TrueNAS won't allow you to do that if the jail is running. Once the jail has fully stopped, we can hit the mount points button over here, and that will bring us to a new page where we can specify a mount point. We can go ahead and do that by clicking the actions button in the top right and then hitting the add button. The first thing I'm being asked for here is my source directory, and that's the directory that's outside of the jail in one of my data sets that I'd like to link with the folder inside the jail. So if I expand this here, I get prompted with both my pools. I'm going to choose my media pool and then expand that down into a transmission test directory that I created specifically for this video. You should select whatever directory is appropriate for your system. Then if I scroll down, we've got the destination here. We can already see there that because the destination is within a jail, the file path is significantly more complicated, but that's okay. I've got the exact file path that you will be using by default in the video description down below. 
So under this destination path, we want to scroll down until we find the user folder. Then we expand that out and we're looking for the local directory. And once we expand that out, we're looking for the etc directory. And that's where we will find the transmission directory down here. Within the transmissions directory itself, we want to go into home and then select downloads. Once we've selected that, we can see a read only option here at the bottom. We want to leave that unchecked because we want read and write access to this symbolic link. And then we can go ahead and hit the submit button. We can see that the mount point is successfully created here. For those of you curious, it is possible for Transmission to specify a different directory within the jail that it will download its files and folders to. You can change that either within the UI itself or in the settings.config file that we looked at earlier. I don't really have a need to do that, but I guess there is some possibility that you're running some other application within the jail as well, and you'd like to direct the downloads to a folder for that application or something similar. Now that we've specified the mount point, we want to make sure that our torrent user from earlier, the user with the user ID of 921, has access to this transmission test directory on the data set side. So we need to go in here and hit storage and then pools. And then under the pool that we have put the directory in, we're going to go ahead and hit the three dots on the right hand side. And then we're going to go ahead and select edit permissions. If we scroll down to the bottom of this page, we get the option to add an ACL item. Once we click on that, we get a couple of options. The very first is whether or not we want to specify a user, group, owner, group, or everyone at. Because I've created a group with the user ID of 921, I'm going to select group here. But if you've created a user, you should select user. Then under the group option that appears here, I'm going to select the torrent hyphen group that I created with the user ID of 921. Under that, we've got ACL type, which is allow. We can leave that as is. And then the permissions type is basic, which again, we can leave as is. The permissions model here is defaulted to modify, which we can leave as is, but I've had some problems with, so I prefer to switch it to full control. That gives this particular group full control of the data set or the directories contained within the data set itself. Then we've got flag types basic and flags inherit, both of which we're not going to touch. They can be left completely at their default. Then down here at the bottom, we've got the option to apply the permissions recursively, which will go down through the data sets and apply the permissions to all of the subdirectories. Because my directory is quite deeply into the data set itself, I am going to select that, but you may not need to. In this pop-up warning, I'm going to select confirm and then hit continue. And then there's an option to apply permissions to child data sets, which has appeared. I don't have any child data sets here, so it doesn't matter for me whether or not I select this, but it might matter to you. Once I've done all of that, I'm just going to hit the save button and I'll be brought back to the pools screen. Now that I've got my permissions set up correctly, I'm going to go back and start my transmission hyphen test jail. Once that's up and running, the transmission service should start again automatically. We can then navigate to the transmission service using the IP address that's associated with the jail that you've spun up, but we need to specify a port of 9091 to navigate to the web interface. So as I've said, I'm just going to navigate to the jails on the left hand side, and then we're going to expand the jail in question using the arrow on the right. We're just going to go ahead and hit start. So that'll take a couple of seconds to start. Once everything has started back up again, the only thing left to do is do a test download to verify that everything is working as expected. Now, you may be able to do that through some of your other installed apps, Radar, Sonar, or something like that, but I like to do a quick manual test to make sure that everything is working correctly. So I'm just going to bounce over to the Ubuntu downloads page, and I'm going to grab one of their magnet links for a torrent download. Then when I hop back to transmission, I can click on this folder icon here. I can just enter the URL into the box that pops up and hit upload and it will begin the download automatically all going well. So I can see here that everything is starting to look good. I didn't get any error messages and it is looking to download that torrent from peers. 
once I start seeing that there is some items downloaded, like now I can see I've already done 11.9 megabytes, things are looking good and I should see that appear in my downloads folder. Once the download is complete, I can see that I got no errors on the transmission side. And if I navigate to the media transmissions test folder, I'll see my Ubuntu ISO sitting there quite happily. That's it guys, that's how to get a version of Transmission running on a jail in TrueNAS. At this stage, I'd ask if you do the YouTube dance, which is to throw down a like, a comment, and possibly subscribe, especially if you'd like to check out some of my other content, specifically integrating Sonar, Radar, Jacket, and all of those other services into one big bundle on your TrueNAS system. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the flip side.